It's October the 23rd. I'm going to be a host tonight. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as nuclearproctologist.org. Subscribe, all that other stuff. Time to gut the nuclear industry again. This Thursday. Nothing makes you feel better than kicking the shit out of the scumbag nuclear industry. It's funny how that actually works. Some people go for a jog. Some people throw plates at the walls. Not us. We curb stomp scumbag nuclear. Only because they deserve it. These are uh, two of the four reactors of the apocalypse. Reactor 3 also known as Medusa and Reactor 4. It's a disgusting cover-up. The Fisher story is one-sixteenth of that coin is all that will get released each year starting now. Nothing's got out in almost 13 years. <laughs> that's the story they're sticking to. It, so wrap yourselves, strap yourselves in and hang on. Yeah, Fukushima polluting the entire Pacific Ocean. And we're talking about how people should be dressed. Influential actor. October 11, 2013. In December of that same year, the investigation chairman for Fukushima says, one Fukushima may destroy the whole country. Collapse of a whole country is possible. And they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. And the billing to your right, they got the Western media in 2013 pretending they're in it. So are you really surprised in 2023 they got the world's media, particularly South Korea, Taiwan, China, and scumbag Japan, claiming only one sixteenth of a gram will get out of that in the future each year. Nothing has gotten out currently. Hong Kong finds... Japanese seafood products suspected of breaching Fukushima wastewater import ban. Hong Kong, by the way, is playing the same role as Taiwan, South Korea. Uh, they rolled back my last video for quite a while. So watch, I'm going to refresh the page, and this, uh, this is a screen, uh, video capture. So I refresh the page, see the thumbs is zero. 158 views. Now I got 38 thumbs up and bloop, bloop, bloop. We'll do it again. Bloop, 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 bloop. Got nothing left. That's not very nice. Not very neighborly. But that's what the nuclear industry is known for, right? I'll bring it up in the center of your page so you can see it in all of its glory. Let me, ref let me start that sequence again. 38 thumbs up. Refresh the page. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Isn't that something? Not hard to get along with at all, these people. So, this is, we've seen this a couple of times now. I've not seen it on anybody else's videos. Hmm, special. Hong Kong chilled scallops and seaweed from Miyagi, Tokyo. 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 Tokyo is banned in China by Hong Kong. And you don't want to be eating uh, shellfish because they bioaccumulate the radiation 125,000 times more than a fish, which is unbelievably proficient. Hong Kong scumbags have confiscated batches of Japanese seafood is suspected of being imported from areas near Fukushima following an indefinite ban on aquatic products from parts of Japan two months ago, which is August the 24th, they're alluding to. And uh, this is the 2007 uh, Fukushima plant. Why, why would you show us that? Like, why, why, why would you show that? 
Because it sure as freak don't look like that now. Now it looks like this over there. So why throw a show us something from 2007? And how come you're not banning food from Western Asia and Northern Asia and Southern Asia? I mean, you're growing food right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation in a nuclear wasteland. And you really think that you're not going to poison your children, your loved ones, by importing that into Hong Kong? You really, are you really that gullible? Are you really that naive? The food was banned by appropriately by 55 countries for a decade. They got replaced, and then they lifted the ban in everything but 14 countries who were playing games claiming that Let me get that over here. Restrictions bears all aquatic products harvested, manufactured, processed, or packed in Tokyo. Tokyo? Tokyo is 240 kilometers away. So even if you ship it from somewhere else to these uh, prefectures, the food will be banned. Fukushima, of course. Chiba, of course. Chigi, of course. Ibaragi, Guma, Miyagi, Nigata, Nagano. And Satama, all of these appropriately should be shunned at all costs. Authorities now conduct radiation inspections in all Jap seafood imports every day. <laughs> Does anybody believe that? What about the food? They're grown, they're grown millions of bags, one tons of radiation, and they're grown food right alongside of it. Like, just Fukushima Prefecture is one of those markers. They produce a billion pounds of rice a year. They've never stopped growing it there. There's no checks. There's no balances. There's no regulations. The industry is completely rogue. It's 80 years now. They're completely out of control, and they're going to destroy everything and everybody with them. They're going to take you down in the ship with them. Calling Russia's decision an extremely regrettable, Japan's foreign minister said it is a strongly demanded withdrawal of import restrictions. Demanding. Japan bemoans the unjust. Unjust. Have you seen what the Japs are doing? They're growing food right alongside of one-ton bags in a nuclear wasteland, surrounded by nuclear wastelands. And so w should we get rid of journalists? Should we make it a crime to be a journalist? Should every one of them lose their degree and be barred from participating in any form anywhere on the planet forever with their perpetual lethal lies, their scumbaggery? Russia put a ban on Monday, two months after the tsunami wreck the Fukushima plant started, started started releasing wastewater, wastewater, started, this started after six days, it never stopped since. It's outrageous, it's nuclear, they're the worst of the worst that we come across. So why didn't Russia ban the food? 12 years ago when that happened, when it started. In, or, right, in order to promote the law, now Russia's banning food is what's going on. They're not banning it because they're worried about tritium. You're, you shouldn't be worried about tritium. You can't even find a tritium signal because uranium, plutonium, and particularly the curium isotope will drown that out. Curium isotopes, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium, for goodness sakes. Russia says it started implementing import restrictions on the Jap seafood on Monday, two months after the tsunami wreck. And so they always got to throw that in your... Oh, it wasn't nuclear's fault. It was tsunami, Dina. Earthquake, Dina. Every single story will do this, eh? We don't care what caused it, it happened. It's a catastrophic event and slaughtering the planet 
just with radioactive food from a nuclear wasteland is, is wrong, no matter how you dress it up. It's still going to be... You can put as many dresses on a duck as you want. It's still going to be a duck, right? Look, you picked up 30 million one-ton bags, for goodness sakes, of radiation. Go mark on each one of those 30 million one-ton bags how wrong I actually are. am. Let's see if we get uh, Kevin on the horn. Haven't heard from Kevin forever. Oh, maybe we'll we'll try again. Maybe he'll call me back. He must have been on the phone. The wastewater discharges, which are expected to continue for decades, <laughs> decades, decades, more like millions of years, it's been going on for 12 years straight. When should we have a real conversation, I wonder? Oh, the tritium's going to get us. <laughs> The wastewater discharge expected to continue for that is strongly opposed by fishing groups. Imagine if you show that picture here when they're telling that particular lie. It's, instead to show you the instead they, what they done was they showed you the reactors in two thousand and seven. And by the way, that that's dining, that's not even Fukushima, that's the dining plant. It's ugly twin, right? Diluted radioactive wastewater treated. Uh, where in South Korea, where hundreds of people protested, it was uh, over a, a hundred thousand in, in a couple of protests, and the average was twenty-five to fifty thousand. That went on for weeks. Seventy percent of the population vehemently opposed the dumping of the tritium. They got everybody so well brainwashed. In fact, that was our last poll. Was South Korea, 70% of the people protesting treaty and proof that brainwashing works. The decision by the Ruskies, the commies, sides is extremely regrettable, and we strongly demand its withdrawal, said the batshit lunatic. Japan continued to seek actions based on Science! Science! Like you know, they're not. That's not science. I'll show. You, I'll show you the science. That's science. Pretending you're in a building that doesn't exist, right? That's what they're talking about for science. The one on the right is science. The one on the left is not science. The truth is not science. I think they should be all dropped into a great big fucking food blender or something. The decisions by Russia's side is extremely regrettable. You're regrettable. Your parents should be arrested for not fucking drowning you when you were born. A team of international atomic energy agency experts, <laughs> scumbags, should the International Atomic Energy Agency is the first one to cut your throat every time. They're leading the fabled story that only 2.2 grams, they're the one who concocted that story, which is insane on, on top of that. I can, I can understand trying to tell a lie, but claiming that only 2.2 grams got out of four of these buildings that are missing? And, and never even got out, he said, it's in, it's in the thousand tanks. Your International Atomic Energy Agency is one of the most hideous things we've ever seen on this planet. They're literally, figuratively monsters. They're, dis they're the epitome of demonic, real-life entities. They're pro look at them protesting the tritium. <laughs> I don't put the tritium <laughs> in the ocean, friends of the earth, Korea, which is probably a pro-nuclear group, right, to promote this narrative. That's why we see, I mean, come on, right? Does, does anybody really think that 2.2 grams of tritium is all got out of these buildings? Does anyone really believe the people on the right-hand side are actually in the fucking building to your left? Is there really anybody on the planet? No. The person that story's for is not going to remember it six seconds after they glance at it. Japan's government has set up a relief fund. There's not a fucking professor on the planet that doesn't know their buildings are gone. There's not a nuclear... You don't have to be a, a nuclear scientist, academic, to know the buildings are gone. And imagine journalists, journalists, forensic investigative journalists, are after telling their... 
dear faithful uh, readers, that the buildings are at, in fact intact, and that everything is normal. And Dana's fear mongering. F stop your fear mongering, Dana. The Jap government is set up. This is why we call them Japs, right? Because what they're doing, that's, that's the Japs. The Japanese people are great, but these are Japs. These are different people. These are monsters. The monsters had government portraying, pretending to be a government to set up a relief fund to help find new markets to poison people from the perpetual radioactive fallout that is and now contaminate the entire planet. The whole story is insane. Right, there's, there's no facet of the story that does not actually meet the definition, the criteria of insanity. I've been sick for three weeks almost. I'm still not doing good. But not a brave face for everybody here today. I just wanted to get something out there so the scumbag industry, at least somebody called them scumbags. There's 865,000 cancers in the first year because, you know, nothing got out, right? Like, it's what we're talking about is so dangerous, it's hard to comprehend that something like this could be happening. I get that. I 100% get that. But at what point, how much information do you need? Because I'll fucking get it for you. Whatever it is, I'll, I'll find it. Trust me. I got it, no doubt, already. The grown bags right alongside of one ton bags of radiation within sight of ongoing nuclear meltdowns. We've never seen anything like that before on our planet, multiple nuclear meltdowns. We've never seen that before. And with decades of reactor cores missing from the top of each building, we've never seen that before. And we got four buildings there with those particular catastrophic attributes. There's 14 prefectures, and I haven't got them all listed there, but that's 14 that were banned by 55 countries because it's like a banana and a potato chip and walking in sunshine and sleeping on an airplane and climbing mountains, right? Russia said it'll start implementing import restrictions on the Jap seafood. What about the other food, though? What about the food from the nuclear wastelands? That's the distraction. Seafood, 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 tritium, seafood, tritium, right? Don't forget that exists. Forget the cancers. Forget the congenital malformations that are catastrophic. 14,200 14, per 100,000 live births, you know, need open-heart surgery. We've never heard something like that in the history of humanity. Decision by the Russian side is extremely regrettable. That's, they're, they're playing the same game as South Korea and Taiwan and China, where they're promoting the tritium. That's what this is all about, this controversy, right? It sounds like the government is out trying to protect you and if you're a Chinese or, or you're South Korea or you're Taiwan. Hundreds of thousands, they say hundreds of people protest, but it was hundreds of thousands. The, and, and there's all kinds of them, right, to protest and treat you. <laughs> Please tell me, don't, <laughs> don't really to treat you. But the buildings are gone. Earth is fucking stupid. The buildings are actually gone. You're, you're in way over your head. It's time to gut up. It's time to say, okay, well, you know, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do something. I'm going to keep doing it until we win this battle. And we get a f Even if we had a thousand people with that attitude, we'll actually win because the industry can't handle any blowback at all. They're completely ineffective. 90% of the money they get goes to administration, not to actual physical material. Their definition of a parasite Well, let's keep going here. Measures include a temporary purchase, the freezing, the storage of seafood, and promotion of seafood sales at home. Well, at least you're going to poison your own first. That's, that's a marvel. Typical in the government says discharging the water into the sea is unavoidable because the tanks will reach capacity. No, it's unavoidable because there's nothing there. And you can't contain whatever water you're pouring on that. You can't contain that. You have multiple sievers per liter. You can't filter that. This this is not like oil for a car or something. It's not like a, 
a Raycor water filtration system or filtration system for your kitchen. This is nuclear. If you if you gather this up, you got a massive dirty bomb that will kill you when you walk past it. If if you try to filter the water we're talking about, the numbers we're talking about, the material we're talking about, you're talking about lethal doses by the liter. Because it came in contact with the particulate, with the fuel corium itself. They got all the money, they got all the time, they got all the effort, they got all the media, they got all the universities, they got all the government agencies on their side. On their side. Right? We're still just this lone fucking voice and the censor is beyond any concept of geonetting that I've ever seen. Complete disregard to people that are doing it. Complete, complete disregard so they can get a paycheck. They're literally the stupidest that humanity can find. That's who gets those jobs. Typical the government says discharging water and sees on the because of tanks. Well, build some more tanks somewhere else. Transfer it somewhere else. But see, the problem is, what they're talking about can't be done. The tanks, the big tanks they're talking about are empty because you can fill all of them up six times a day with just one reactor. They need a million pounds an hour, a million uh, gallons an hour, 4,500 tons an hour, a uh, minute rather. Not an hour, but a minute. So a million gallons a minute, 4,500 tons a minute. The numbers we're talking about per day are stunning just to keep them cool without running out of control like they already are. Reactor 1 and 2, parts of reactor 1 has gone China syndrome, fuel pool detonated with decades. There's two of them with decades of reactor cores. We've never seen nothing like that, just a single building. We've never seen nothing like that. There were, each of these buildings is uh, orders of magnitude more than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined, each of the buildings. Because it's pure uranium, pure plutonium, it's not graphite like Chernobyl. It's not graphite like um, wind scale. And they changed the name because what they done at wind scale was so evil. Fukushima nuclear waste water. Japan criticizes Russia's ban on its food. Yeah, we know. The ministry called Moscow's restrictions unjust, which plays right into their treaty and propaganda and said they'd go counter to the global move, counter to the global move towards easing or lifting of import restrictions on deadly radioactive food from a nuclear wasteland. Fukushima up close 13 years later. So you see that what happened was when you have earthquakes, the tanks were shifting because they're empty. So they built uh, these contraptions around them so that you couldn't notice the shifting of the tank during heavy earthquakes, because you get a lot of earthquakes. Like a lot. You see those small tanks up there? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them is what they're counting for their thousand tanks. Right? Uh, see the small tanks over there? Compared to the big ones up The big ones are up there, the rest of them are small. It's perpetual noise. You can't put it in the tanks, right? Because each of the tanks is at least 1.4 million sieverts of beta. What about gamma, alphas, and neutrons, and then by proxy the X-rays? So you can't you can't fill them up because you can't build another tank on the site. You can't filter it because you can never change the filter. We're talking about nuclear fuel, for God's sakes. One nuclear meltdown causes as much damage over long term as a major war. That's, that's actually an interesting observation. And you, you can definitely say that, but, it's, it, but the problem is radioactive fallout is forever. A war at least can be mitigated after 100 years or something. Beyond nuclear, I should have known there was a big turd in the punch bowl. International recently published an article about the status of Fukushima. Didn't show you that did they? And they definitely didn't show you that, and they'll never show you that. I, I think beyond nuclear is disgusting. You should too. The spent fuel rods of Fukushima nuclear reactor site are stored in pools of water at the top floor 
of the compromised reactor buildings 100 feet above the ground. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no! The, they're almost at the top of a 190-foot building. Right there. And over there behind it, and that's the reactor core. It's at the top of the building, too. There, there's no fuel pools at the top of that building. There's no top to the building. And beyond nuclear, knows better. So does Ernie Gunnarsson, so does Helen Caldercott, so does Christopher Busby, so does Kyle Vetter, so do the rest of the scumbag degenerates. Let me try, see if I can get Blanche again. One ringy dingy dingy. Hey Kevin, are you, Dana, are you busy? Can you give me two or three minutes on the show? I'm doing a show as I'm talking here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because make sure people can hear you too, right? Okay, um, you got any updates you want to throw out your buddy way, Kevin, or on Fukushima? Yeah, or so, uh, here's my, just my activism going forward. So I will be, I'll be in Monterey here in a while. We'll see how that plays out. Tight one. Looks like, and but uh, the first international IAEA get this symposium to promote nuclear energy. The first ever is in March in Brussels in Belgium. So I'm headed there in March. But you know that's a while away. Okay, well that's great. Um, yeah, I'm missing this in that first one. Oh, they're gonna get a piece of my mind. Yeah, thank goodness, right? Somebody's got to fight him. Yeah. There'll be plenty of internet. There'll be plenty of uh, German activists there, Austrian activists, Belgian activists. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of a lot of the German activists are a lot of Germans hate all nuclear, all over right? Europe. Yeah. Even France, you didn't believe it. You didn't believe the activist community, the anti-nuclear energy activists. Now here, you got some crazy guy in Oregon, Utah, and some crazy Canadian up there in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> it's pretty late back in my end of the woods, man. It's we don't have any activists at all. I don't think in Canada. No, it's, same with here in the U.S. It's sad, uh, man. It's sad. nuclear energy. We have Helen Caldecott and Arnie Gunnar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there. That's what we got. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I, I was I, well. I was laughing because just before I got you on the phone, I was I was raging about them scumbags. <laughs> oh, I call them the half nukers. You know, they made a lot of money freaking. Yeah, hell For a fact, under shields funded by the nuclear industry, I have some really good stories about him that I can prove that I caught him dead red. Oh, you did? No, I know. You know? Well, oh, you're, yeah, you're American, been... so you've you've had contact with these people too, right? Oh, yeah, for years. I knew what they were up to way before Fukushima. These yeah. are bags. Yeah, they're, they're monsters. You know, Helen Caldecott's husband told me. <laughs> Caldecott's ex-husband called me one day. And he says, you know what Helen is, Caldecott? And I said, well, what's that? And he says, a second-hand movie star. Yeah. I got that <laughs> feeling about her, too, eh? That's hilarious. Well, she started out. She left. She left, uh down under and came to Hollywood and she was an aspiring actress when she was a young woman. Oh, and really? she got a couple, yeah, yeah, she got a couple roles. She was a beautiful young woman and then when uh, 1979 went through my island, she saw the opportunity and her publicist, her, whoever her agent was in Hollywood told her to take this on, you know, and hook up with Jane Fonda and crew, you know, and which she did and, you know, and then it was all about the money with her. It was never about the activism. Yeah, I, I, I showed no, the videos of her. Books. I showed her the videos of her. She's, the she got 14 books. And uh, yeah, she, 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 she's, what she was doing was really just, wow. Making money. Raising yeah, money. When it's I was really in New York, horrifying. I was at the symposium in 2015. Her symposium on uh, nuclear, anti-nuclear, I was at the New York Medical Academy. I went. I was there. And uh, I sat with Noam Chomsky. Of course, he turned out being a dirtbag too. But anyway, yeah, he did he's so. an But anyway, she told me right to my face that I couldn't use the F word at uh, her nuclear. It wasn't for that. And I, I told, looked at her and I said, I'm a butcher, what's a cow? I'm a baker, what's a cake? Yeah. 
<laughs> the second day of her symposium, she showed up late, hung over. She'd been shopping, you know, been partying in New York, you know, her and her friends, that's what they do in New York. And so Molly, her assistant, who's from down under Australia, she's great. Molly snuck me up. And I went on a Fukushima tyrant like you never heard. <laughs> By the way, Bob Alvarez was there, too. And I let him have it. Yeah, Robert he's Alvarez, a piece of shit. Too. Oh, he's a phony piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. He's another one. Yeah, I've covered him a little bit. What do you expect? Well, the whole thing is stacked eh, against the entire planet. Oh, the God. Well, the, that's how they did it. The nuclear industry years ago, they, you know, it's, they paid those people off. Just like, it's like Dutch Sands and uh, the Cobra Report. Remember they started out on Fukushima? Oh, um, yeah. James Jan, Jan, Colbert had the uh, Fukushima update, oh. and he sold that. Yeah. He sold that to the Fukushima Reconstruction Agency. But he had yeah, all the yeah. scumbags. He had Ken Abusler had the keys to it. Uh, Jay Cullen had the keys to it. James Colbert had the keys. And they were all putting up the banana guys, the potato chip guys. And they got bought off. They yep. got paid. He, it was really he something. came to the Million Mass March, which is 10 years ago. He showed up in D.C., you know, he, and he was there. And he made up all kinds of lies all the internet. I mean, why I'm in critical condition, saying that I went after him and attacked him. And apparently some girl in the crowd got in his face and called him a liar. And I says, what the hell has that got to do with me? I told him, you keep slandering me like that. We're going to have a problem, buddy. And uh, he just made up lies. And then he called it a hoax. And like I said, sold this document. And same with uh, that dirtbag, uh, Dutch D sense. Yeah, Dutch says, Dutch said Fukushima's a scam. In fact, Dutch had took uh, Geiger counters and drove across the United States and couldn't find any remember radiation. That remember that? Remember he used that fake little thing of radiation he put it on their sleeve yeah. just like that connecting the dots freaks. So, so the dots, yeah. him and that connecting the dots freaks like, were buddies. You do know that. Yeah. Those two were buddies. I didn't know that. They, they, both, they yeah. both done the same thing. Eh? They both drove across yeah. the countries. Yeah, fake radiation readings. Yeah. It was really something, yeah. And look at their YouTube sites. Where, I mean, my YouTube site was bigger than theirs, man. Mine crashed, theirs to the moon, and yeah. they just simply call it a hoax, and they get rich. Well, he uh, did, yeah. <clears throat> yeah they so did you get the news this week on, that came out and Google finally admitted that they, they admitted that they were covering up anybody in the early days using the word Fukushima meltdowns or using the word radiation, and Google's admitted it now? No, I, I've been really sick all week. Uh, I've only done one show oh. a week, so I'm doing a show tonight for people. But I'm, I'm still... Uh, I'm still trying to recover, right? And uh, I never okay. seen. I couldn't do anything, but I, I, so, it's a tough week so for them. So do you getting. know about uh, Bard? It's B A R D. Google's new AI experiment. No. With artificial intelligence, so they have a new AI platform out there. It's a chatbot, and so what they're doing, you have to be invited in. Ten thousand supposedly intellects who are going to set the tone on reality of what is, and then their engineers and their people. So it shows up, Google comes out on their high A bot saying that they admitted they were in communications with uh, Japan and the United States nuclear industry and they were actually going against and shuffling back and hiding and striking and taking down and hiding any person that you, on uh, YouTube that was saying the word Fukushima meltdown. Well, there was only one or two of us in the world, <laughs> you know, in March of 2011. I mean, yeah. I was really it there for a while, and then you came along, and so it was just us. And so, like you said, they didn't have anybody to pick on, so they're admitting it now that they did it. And so we were right the whole time. It's, and it's, so heart, still it's heartbreaking. It, you know? It's heartbreaking. Yeah. That, uh, and, you know, it's heartbreaking that people take that job too, right? Do you think about the scumbags that do it? Yeah, like you said, got no freaking soul. They don't get cancer. Piece of the shit. No, they're, you know, so, they're, they're lost. So, you see the IAE came out today and says, we're going to, first time in 12 and a half years, we're going to test the fish on yeah. the <laughs> i seen that. i <laughs> seen that. Sure. I almost rolled off my freaking... They, they've only been there five, five times. All of them were 2023, right? They, that's, so where were they the first 12 years? And uh, we got all it's kinds it's of headlines about so now. I was in Vienna. I was in Austria protesting the IAE in 2017. And Amano who was head of the IAEA, I used to talk to him. Sandra got in his face, or Sandra actually had a cigarette with him, knowing I was really there protesting. So I was talking, and I said, you really, because they have to go right through that door, and I have that blanched box there, and they don't know I'm there. So I, I had a conversation with him. 
I said, you're really going to go to Fukushima? Sam was like, you'll get cancer and die. And so he went, supposedly. But anyway, I was there in 2019, and it got reported. I was in, at the UN. Yeah, I, rem- I, I remember that, that shit. Yeah. Did he? And he dropped in. Wow. Yeah, he dropped in, and I'm like, and so everybody there, I'm like, well, what killed him? I had no one. And, you know, he's a Japanese descent. He'd been at Fukushima, and he was head of the IEA. And he... And I'm like, it had to be cancer, it had to be cancer. And I, no, it wasn't cancer, it wasn't cancer. And this went on for a year. About a year later, sure shit, it was cancer. Nasty, nasty cancer, too. <laughs> so uh, these cycles will kill themselves. Yeah. They're that insane. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like what's going on in the Middle East right now. I, tr- I tried <laughs> rationalizing it, but I couldn't. What these oh, people. they're psychos. Because it just shows you there's a certain group of people out there that'll do anything for money. These well, nuclear dirtbags, these... Imperials go to them and they're saying, right, hey, here's the, money. The okay. officials, the, the yeah, fi- I want to be like you. Yeah, the official story since July the 13th was only 2.2 grams got out of the reactors. Trinium. <laughs> and so, like, I don't know how to react or respond to that, say, because it's so crazy. But it's now it's you know everywhere, and, and the International Atomic Energy Agency is saying that too. You know what I do? To everybody, because people email, everybody's talking to me. Oh, no, it's a guy today from Budapest. I know this the university a teacher asked me about what I'm just, you that stupid? Yeah. Said, so, I, I, so I sent him the link. There's, I have these three links. In, 20, uh, in May this year, China put out a study that they were testing fish in the Gulf right there at Fukushima. And it's widely reported. It's reported by the Guardian and Reuters, everybody. 18,000 decals of cesium-137 in the fish and 880 times over the safe legal limits. And I'm saying, okay, if they didn't start flushing until August 24th, how did that get into the fish in May? Um, and they even list training. And then I post the link back from the KLK Ken Buser study back in 2011, one was a thousand times. And then I post the link in 2022. I have all those links on my video I put up today. That Those links are there. And I'm like, okay, if that's the case, that caught it all up. And how did that happen? How does it get 18,000 times a Beckham in May this year? Well, it, it, it up until August. It was 29 million Beckwells a kilogram in Tokyo in just one spot. And this was yeah. after yeah. a rainfall. So they were suggesting that was Tokyo, right? They, they can't get rid of the water filtration, the sediment. They can't get rid of the sewage. And they can't get rid of the ash from the incinerators because all of us way too radioactive to get rid of. So it's it's absurd. There's so much into the environment. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the cover so, story, right? I mean, the thing is, is people are so ignorant. I'm like, hello, there's a jet stream. I mean, we're the downwinders here in North America, and everybody banned everything except for us in North America. Oh, yeah. They they removed, yeah. We moved, Canada removed yeah. restrictions after 93 days. Hey, um, yeah. I'm going to let you go. Away. You, got, you got any uh, thoughts on Israel and Palestine, what the hell they're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't dare say anything on that. So it's the same old imperialist bullshit. This country, the North America has been completely captured by these Zionists, you know, these uh, imperialists. Yeah. And so it's just like 9-11. There's no different 9-11. You remember uh, when they shot the Palestinian reporter, they sniped her in the head and killed her a couple months ago? Right. Yeah, and they said that it was, we didn't do it, we didn't. And then they said, oh, it was an accident, and they got proved that they physically sniped. That's what started this whole madness. When they sniped her in the head, she was famous in Palestine. Really, she's like the most famous reporter. And Israel admitted, finally, that they sniped her, murdered her on Palestine, in, in Gaza. And so that's what started this madness. Yeah, they, so, they killed 13 but, cents, but, yeah. Yeah, and then so 9-11, remember, you know, they knew these guys were going to do this, and they did it, and then so they could do the reaction. This was the plan, the Zionist plan the whole time. They opened the door, there was, God's right there has the best security in the world right there. There was no security. They just let them in. It was seven, so they seven, do this. seven this hours. Was it was seven hours with no reply from the Air Force, the Navy, the military. Yeah. Seven yeah. hours. Yeah. Seven right. hours, man. Just like 9-11, right? So we could, we, like you say, you say it best when we says, 9-11, we went to get, you know, 10,000 Taliban, it's minus trillion dollars, and how many people in the Taliban didn't even do 9-11? So yeah, no, it was crazy. It was crazy. So it's the same thing. And the U.S. is just going to fund it, so who is the U.S.? 
No, but the crimes are crime syndicate. They're the same people. It's Musk, it's Gates, it's the same imperialist. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. Okay, uh, uh, but a- a- any uh, any final words? Are, are you headed out on the road again for, you want people to yeah, pay attention? Yeah, I'm going to go to the next, so I've, I've been, you know, recovering from this open heart surgery and, you know, and I've got a cabbage and I've got a pacemaker, so they haven't really let me travel. So they gave me the okay yesterday. Oh, is that right? So, Good news, Kevin. Great. Yeah. I got the okay yesterday from the doctor. So you're going to so you, you, start heading out, are you? Yeah. Uh, so back to tide pulling first. Uh, so I'll be doing the tide pull, you know, the next full moon we get. Where, where to? Probably Monterey. Monterey. Monterey, okay. I yeah. think. Or, and, or, I don't know, I think that's the, my best option. And, or, you know, somewhere along the California coast so I can document this catastrophe. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I appreciate all it. happened off a cliff in 2011, 2012. So, and then, and then, you know, my, then I'll go to Belgium in March and hopefully, you know, stay in Europe for a while and take on the IEA. And, you know, because over there, you get in Europe, this whole censorship on Fukushima doesn't exist. Wow. Over there, oh, they all, all over Fukushima. Why do you think Germany shut them all down? Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm uh, thinking about getting asylum in a country because of the censorship I'm under and try again well, from another country. It. The best anti nukers in the world, and they don't let anybody in. They've already offered me is asylum, is Austria. Is that right? And so they, yeah, they already offered to me. They don't let nobody in. And, but they already offered me. They're anti nuclear. They love me over there, yeah, because anybody's anti nuclear energy in Austria, Germany, Spain. Italy, they hate the nuclear energy scumbags. I mean, Spain, too. I'll take you. They love you. Sounds they hate the nuclear industry. Sounds good. Okay, Kevin, looking forward, to your, looking forward to your updates, my friend. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, nice talking to you, Kevin. You have a great day, my friend. Yeah, keep yeah. up the good work, man. Yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah, okay, yeah, bye-bye. That's Kevin Blanche. Kevin has been... His dad used to take him on um, on protests when he was just in diapers and, and he's done his entire life now. And uh, I think he's protest every reactor the Americans got and many, many more worldwide. It's an incredible legacy. Let's keep going through the news cycle. And it's better when you can do the show live, but that's the next best thing anyway. The spent fuel rods at the Fukushima nuclear reactor site are stored in pools of water at the top floor of the compromised reactor buildings 100 foot above the ground. So can anybody see the fuel pools 100 foot above the ground? I don't know why they didn't razz these buildings right to the ground. Well, we know why, because they needed a stump so they can pretend there was fuel pools, right? I showed you some of that earlier. Just bear with me, I get set up here. The naughty, naughty, crazy, savage nuclear industry here. I'm going to show you radioactive fallout from these reactors. This is the French model. I think this one is based on 16 days. And it's a million to 10 million beckles a cubic meter covering the entire plant of the cesium-137. And that's, and there's many other models of many different isotopes like that. And so the buildings to your left dictate that's how you should think, right? And there's many countries produced many models like that and quantified those assertions with an absurd amount of documentation. Reactor 3 to your right had ejected the entire inventory for 40 years into the environment. This stuff is pyrophoric. It'll catch fire in the air and it'll liberate the radiation. And this is why 55 countries banned the food in 14 prefectures. Because the buildings are gone. There is no fuel. There is no reactor cores. We've never seen nothing like that in history. Just a single building. We got four of them. Reactor 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's a lot of evidence to suggest the common spin fuel pool is gone. And a lot of evidence to suggest reactor six had a meltdown. Because of these uh, buildings, in particular, the common spin fuel pool reactor six, were redacted in over 700 
pictures that were released on the 10th anniversary by Tepco. And I actually got a video in my playlist where I go through a lot of these pictures. And you don't realize that the pictures were taken by drones. And when you zoom in, you realize all the reactors and common span fuel pool and reactor six are redacted. And everything surrounding them, like the pump houses, the stacks. Except for Unit 3, which completed removal of its spent fuel rods in 2019 beyond nuclear, folks. Well, Reactor 3 is gone. That is gone. So claiming that they got Reactor 3 fuel pool. Like, that's Reactor 3. And fuel pools would have been... Uh, that's only one less than one quarter of the building, not one third, but less than one quarter of the building. <laughs> so that's a quarter of the building. That's top. That part right there is the top part up there. So that top part up there is that part right there. There's four of them. And then that part right there is taller than that and reactor four stacked on top of each other. They should have been razzed all the way to the ground. There's nothing functional there. Those inventories were lost. And they weren't 100 feet above the ground there, but 145 feet above the ground. And is the open pools of water the epitome of high risk? Well, not high risk, they're gone beyond nuclear use. You disgusting traitor, you, you monstrous traitor, you revolting traitors, you evil, disgusting traitors. If the pools is damaged even partially, another major disaster could occur. Really? Like that? It's despicable. It's despicable to suggest the fuel pools are at the top of Reactor 3. Or Reactor 1, for that matter. Reactor 1 is gone, and but Reactor 3 is 100%. This is, um, uh, this is the size of the reactor. That's the detonation. That's the fuel pools and the reactor cores coming back down to Earth. And we know that because we have pictures showing that the building is done, a stump is left. And that stump should have been razzed right to the ground. They left it there so they can put a contraption over and pretend they're getting fuel at the pool. So as Japan is preparing a massive earthquake, the economists, which are disgusting, who said children in Fukushima only need to gurgle. Exposure to open air, spent fuel rods erupt into a sizzling zirconium fire, which then melts down to plutonium uranium pellets by a massive radiation release of the most toxic material on the planet. So why didn't they right, say zirconium burns at 1,600 degrees, ignites the plutonium uranium, will burn at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, and will be a liquefied mass that will cut through the earth like a butter uh, with a hot knife. And the most toxic material on the planet and there's four of the reactors that released all the inventories. I think I think it's stunning how they lied to you. I think it's stunning. It can upset up in an entire countryside, countryside, <coughs> and force evacuations of major cities. It's despicable to lie the way they're lies. Look, you're supposed to evacuate the northern hemisphere. The plume. This is 19 days of radioactive fallout for the Norwegian Institute of Air Research. The truth is really easy to tell if you're a good person. It's really hard to tell if you're evil like the nuclear industry and nuclear academics and nuclear scientists. Curium, which is the product of the meltdown of the fuel rods in the core of the reactors, is so hot that the lava can melt upwards 12 inches. It's burning at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature. It'll consume anything around it. It doesn't melt up. It went up there, right? <laughs> it didn't melt up. Does that look like it fucking melted up? Why are these people allowed to talk on the planet? One thing to remember, much of the melting of the cement during a meltdown occurred within minutes to hours, so keeping the core cool is vital for stopping the corium 
from breaching the containment vessel. There are two breaches of the containment vessel. D like reactor three, this is a Medusa. This was mixed oxide fuel. I think I think it's so criminal what they're saying and try, how they're trying to downplay every facet. I I can't barely contain my contempt. In the case of Fukushima, Tepco claims the Corium did not breach the outer wall of the containment vessel. Why are you listening? Why are you listening to them? Why aren't you using evidence? Why are you pretending you're a human? Because that's what you're doing. You're not only pretending you're human. You're not a human. <coughs> Beyond nuclear and the rest of them are definitely not human. And then the arrogance to say that regarding the decision to release the radioactive water from the tanks, this was released immediately. In the first six days, this, we lost the, almost the entire inventories of four decades of reactor cores and four buildings. With water accumulated daily for purposes of keeping the hot stuff, the hot stuff, they're calling that hot stuff, from igniting to an indeterminate fireball, the decision released was approved by the International Atomic Energy Agency, who's claiming out of the four buildings, only 2.2 grams got out. It's hard to imagine people that this actually exists. It's hard to imagine what they're like in real life. How can they raise a family? How does that even work? How can you cover up this and then pretend you're a good person? How does how does that actually how does the brain rationalize that? I wonder. The International Atomic Energy Agency does not have the scientific authority to make references to ecological impact of the water discharge, nor has it carried out such a long term assessment, more of a political decision than a scientific one. Well, I've carried out the long term assessments in academic studies and field expeditions four to five months a year on the ocean when they're coming home, doing species counts as an extinction event. According to the World Nuclear Association, why would you quote them for anything, really? There's no fatalities due to radiation exposures at Fukushima. There was 865,000 people with extra cancers. There's 12,636 people died of heart attacks in a single month compared to any other year post Fukushima. There's a street there where seven people dropped dead of heart attacks, for God's sakes, in one year. Forbes magazine reported no one died from radiation at Fukushima. So what? There's lots of people that are reported. Why are, you, why are you quoting the ones who didn't report it? International Atomic Energy Agency Ralphie L. Grossi says it believed this is a lie and part of a massive cover-up. No, that's got to be somebody else I'm quoting there. Like, if you're suggesting that the International Atomic Energy Agency has a single honest bone in their bodies, it's a ludicrous assertion. Approximately 32 million people in Japan are affected by the radioactive fallout from Fukushima disaster. 32 million? <clears throat> they banned the food from, you know, there's 36 million in Tokyo. Tokyo should be abandoned, metropolitan Tokyo. And... Why don't they show any documentation with your assertions? This is a Neptunium-239 dispersal model covering the planet in 21 days. ABC, BBC Future Planet article, 2019. The true toll of Chernobyl, internationally recognized death toll is just 31 people. And that 6,000 newborns are born each year in Ukraine with congenital heart defects called Chernobyl heart. That's according to a, a charity from the United Kingdom, by the way. The cocksure pro-nuclear crowd has trumpeted Fukushima's example of Mother Nature taking lives because of the earthquake and tsunami, whereas the power plant's accident proved nuclear power can withstand the worst without unnecessary death or illnesses like that. Like to suggest that that didn't happen? is not acceptable. And who did it quote? No less than Mary Yamaguchi. Why would you why would you quote someone like that? I apologize if I'm yelling. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. the, the men were among 26,000 workers, many in their 50s and 60s, from the margins of society with no special skills or close family ties, tasked with removing the contaminated topsoil and stuffing it in tens of thousands of black bags. It's over 30 million black bags. It's not 26,000 workers. These are the homeless, the destitute victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. And 26,000 workers. Hang on. That's the problem with this topic. There's nothing easy. But the story to learn if you're trying to learn it on your own, there's a lot of you got a lot of problems, right? <clears throat> okay, so the ice wall, high priced Fukushima ice wall nears completion, but effectiveness is doubtful. So they said they had a total of 260,000 people working on the ice wall, but 26,000 working on the thousands of one-ton bags, which is actually 30 million one-ton bags. So if you do the math on it, they had $308 million, and divided by 260,000 people, is $1,186 each if you don't build a wall. Right, so time number 26,000 workers, yet for the ice wall, you had 260,000 people to build an ice wall instead of a real wall. That didn't work. Why would you build an ice wall anyway? And what the frig are you talking about, 260,000 people? Right, to make you think that they must have come up with a solution, right? That the water's not getting into the ocean. That's what this was all about. Uh, well, just let me go through that then. So, uh, so, the, so, the, so the ice wall. Okay. There's, there's quite other, f uh, quite a few other things that they were trying. That they allegedly were trying. Uh, let me try to explain that to you. So, the ice wall is not meeting expectations. Uh, it's not going to stop the groundwater. Why not use a real wall? They, they failed to deliver on a on a fence to stop the radiation. It's a billion dollars, and they said they couldn't afford it. They spent twenty billion picking up, mil you know, millions of one-ton bags. The, the groundwater bypass operation didn't work. The TEPCO admitted in two thousand and fourteen that the ELP system hadn't functioned three years later. They also admitted uh, six months after that, three and a half years after the multiple nuclear meltdowns. Who gives a fuck whether it was an earthquake or a tsunami? You had multiple nuclear meltdowns. Let's talk about what happened instead of trying to pretend that it's harmless. For the last three years, the Riva, which is the same as the ELP system, was unused and kept out of operations. And then, of course, it came out that the Ceres system was supposed to separate cesium-137, which is ludicrous to suggest that you could do something like that because the atoms are all the same size. You can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. How the fuck are you going to separate 500 cesium-137 from the plutonium, uranium, americium, neptunium, a thousand other fission products? You can't do it. And they admit that the series system didn't work and that they had enormous amounts of highly contaminated water from a plethora of leaks, and these are not leaks, these are hemorrhages, because the buildings are actually destroyed. Uh, 
back to that story. The United Nations report on radiation fallout from Fukushima said no radiation-related deaths or acute illnesses were observed among the workers or the general, general public exposures. Well, just tell the lie over and over, and then they believe it probably, right? Let's see what we got here. How about this one right here? Extreme increase in mortality caused by cardiac diseases. Death rate might give the creeps to some people. 12,700 people dead, 12% 12 extra. 12,700 extra in a single month from heart attacks, not counting all the other. So to suggest nobody died, there's 865,000 cancers in the first year. Hang on. It's hard to tell the story. No matter how you look at this story, it's a very hard story to tell. you got to have a lot of patience. A Fukushima worker had a heart attack while working at Reactor 1, was 31 years old. Radiation around Fukushima levels where humans vomit uncontrollably. And that's a lethal dose as we're talking about. Tokyo Nuclear Cloud Crisis, Tokyo, 240 kilometers away. Two high school students die in the same school at once in Fukushima Nuclear Wasteland. So seven people died on a single shopping street. The ambulance are there 10 times a day because it's like a banana, right? Another Fukushima cleanup worker dies, another one. Top Tokyo doctor dealing with nuclear workers demand government step in. Some can't even read. And the worker who died there was removing soil, not at the plant itself. Fukushima worker filmed at the plant and was asked to fake documents, underage people. They're using the most vulnerable society. Nuclear scientists, academics are not going there. It's a coward society. If you, Like, if you were trying to determine what's the most cowardly society we got, it's the nuclear industry, particularly nuclear academics. Every time a car backfires, they shit their pants all over that place. Fireman dies after working in Fukushima. There's over 300 police officers died in the no-go zone, which is a nuclear wasteland. Calling it a no-go zone is not going to come up with solutions which is disgusting they do that, by the way. It's a nuclear wasteland. 40% of Fukushima visitors show internal exposures to radiation. Over 1,000 workers at the plant have internal radiation, 10,000 counts per minute after visiting Fukushima. Yeah, but they had their paper suits on. Surely they're okay. And I, I think anybody that gave someone a paper suit to go into a nuclear meltdown site should be charged with... Uh, so, you know, the worst crimes imaginable, genocide. After work in the affected area, four workers died, and victims leukemia, heart attacks. This is from the gamma shines, neutron bombardments, the alpha rays, the beta rays, the, the X-rays. Five former Japanese prime ministers, is, you remember that when they came out and issued a declaration Japan should break with the nuclear power generation? And the media worldwide attacked them, five former prime ministers. The, the nuclear industry is almost as powerful as Israel. The 10th anniversary of the Great Eastern Japan Earthquake and Tsunami that triggered the, the earthquake and tsunami that triggered. And how many times do we see that exact word for word, exact, exactly, exact words? Who cares what caused it? Like, the earthquake itself, Reactor 1 blew up before the tsunami or was melted down 50 minutes after. The loss of water would cause them to melt down. You don't need a tsunami. You just need to lose power. And the earthquake accomplished that. Now, see, like, he don't match up 
when you take a picture, the back of it doesn't look like a picture. Because that's what you're looking at in the background is a picture. Like, and I've taken so many pictures just on the research expeditions. And I do so much work like where you see what I'm doing right now for so long. I, I can tell you when something is not legitimate. That's not a legitimate picture. Cameras don't work that way. If the camera is going to work that way, then the building peony comes out clear. Normally, it would be pretty blurry to have someone that clear in the foreground, right? There's no Back then, there was no magic cameras that corrected that. There might be some technologies right now, but they're very expensive stuff. But that's Desmond Deuce in the background, for goodness sakes. International nuclear lobby represents only a minority as the influence of money to dominate the world's population of immense power is now united the world's minority nuclear community one great big galaxy. You get a little bit stupider every time you hear something from beyond nuclear, don't you? The spent fuel at the site contained 85 times more cesium-137 than Chernobyl and 50,000, 100,000 times more than the Hiroshima bomb. Uh, well, each reactor, there's 10 reactor cores in the top of the buildings in the fuel pools. To, to suggest that it's only 85 times more cesium, what about the uranium, plutonium, and curium, you, you disgusting maggot? Speaking of maggots, the, the Bulletin of the unconcerned, unconcerned Atomic Scientist, the Bulletin of Unconcerned Scientists, which were created, they were created during the Manhattan Project. It, like, go look at Maximilia from Canada. I apologize for what he's doing. The Union of Unconcern Unconcerned Scientists. If you go look at their board, if you go look at the people, the players they got there, they got, like, a whole list of them. These are people work who worked at the White House for years and, and, and Pentagon and everything else at the Scumbag Universe Schools of Mass Destructions. Fukushima wastewater issue will further divide a nation, split families, and cause atomic divorce. Atomic divorce. He's not even a nuclear scientist. He's an assistant professor here in Canada. So he's the useful idiot. The latest, greatest, useful idiots. And as soon as you look at him, you're like, yeah. Just because you say it, like I provide the documentation, they don't. Pro protect children from the tritium, right? They got everybody on protest and they're promoting that protest in particular. In a bid to dispel seafood worries around the releases of Fukushima nuclear wastewater, which has gone on for 12 straight years. Oh, almost 13 straight years. The initial plume covered the entire planet in about 20 days. Japan's Prime Minister, Kushida, ate a ray of sushi. It is safe and delicious, he joyfully declared during a public relation effort to revitalize the fishing industry. Safe and delicious. The tritium. As someone who studied the aftermath of Fukushima nuclear disaster for a decade, he believed the decision will irreversibly erode the public's trust and create irreparable, long-lasting tension. Well, thank you very much, but uh, do us the world a favor, Max. Man. Keep your fucking mouth shut, you piece of shit. Fukushima wastewater issue will further divide a nation, split families, and cause atomic divorces. The government sought to fight what is called harmful rumors around radiation risk, which leads people to avoid food products. One mother explained to me, other members of the community will tell you to stop spreading rumors. Now, they got to drive past millions of one-ton bags to yell at each other. Millions of one-ton bags of radiation. It's all quite crazy. <laughs> crazy is the only way you can describe nuclear. Is 
Oh, well, I don't know. I mean, you got it. Well, not the only way, I guess. Monsters is a pretty appropriate way. The mother's decisions to evacuate their children from Fukushima severely affects the family ties, even creating disagreements within couples in a new phenomenon called atomic divorce. Let me, let me, I got a great way of articulating this. It's impossible not to understand once you see this. Oh, I hope anyway. <coughs> The world's insane. How the world can sit there when nuclear destroys everything and everybody's future is a frightening, is a frightening reality. I just want you to see what your own two eyes sometimes. <coughs> I need one more. Yeah, it don't matter. Let's go with this. So, there's 105,000 sites like that. Currently, there's 105,000 sites where they're storing the bags. That was 2019. 2016, there was 150,000 sites of one-ton bags, which meant... If you're in Fukushima Prefecture, so the time of divorce, you know, to bring their kids to school, I got another way shown to you, Koryama City. Like, how can you drive past these bags on the highway and then go back that same day into that nuclear wasteland with your loved ones? How can you send your kids to school when your community is surrounded by millions of one-ton bags, how can you not get out of there? Hang on. Is the world so crazy? The world is so incredibly and crazy. I forgot what I want to do. Millions of one-ton bags in nuclear wasteland. Oh, Koreana City, right. Yeah, because I got a story here that is, it's so, it's so bizarre. It just doesn't even seem real whenever I cover this story. Try it again. There we go. It takes a little bit to find the story because I have so much, but I'm pretty sure I can find this right away here coming up. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we're in business. But it's a complicated story. There we go. And this story just, it catches you off guard when you ever, uh, put it to you. If you've never seen it before, even if you've seen it before, it still blows me away. It's 2013, November the 4th. Koryama City Elementary School in Japan is using water bottles to shield students from radiation water bottles. An elementary school in Koryama City is located in Fukushima Prefecture, 34 miles west of the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Disease Factory, is taking these water bottles to get the kids to bring water, empty water bo bottles or bottles to school. They fill it up with water and put it in crates. And he stacked them inside and outside the classroom to shield radiation coming from outdoors from the courtyard coming through the building. The bottles are filled with water and placed inside a square boxes that are stacked around the classroom. Uh, 
According to the school, it reduced the radiation levels inside the school by one third. So if you stack them inside, outside the classroom, you can reduce the radiation because they're measuring in microsievers and millisieverts. They're not measuring in atomic physical decays because they've been manipulated by the disgusting, despicable nuclear industry for so long, they're completely complacent. The biggest mistake you'll ever make is putting your faith in anything nuclear academics, nuclear scientists tell you, or particularly nuclear pundits in your media. Their job is to cut your throat, and I mean that. That's their job, because you can't perceive it. You can't smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it or taste it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. It's using water bottles to shield radiation coming from the courtyard and other areas. Residents of Koryama City are concerned about the high amount of radioactive. Now, every house in that city, which is 300,000 people or something, every house is in 90,000 houses is entitled to so called decontamination, but you can't decontaminate a house. Like on the battlefield, if you find a speck of the depleted uranium munitions, in the soil, you're supposed to build a no uh, fence 900 feet back, 15 feet high around the entire speck, not touch it, not remove it, not try to pick it up, not clean it up or anything, but build a fence around it and that's 900 foot away from it. And then the fence right around it has to be covered in international signs to warn people to stay away. So what about your house is one great big nuclear wasteland because that's what we're talking about. Koryama, residents of Koryama City are concerned about the high amounts of radioactive material which have been found around their town, which is surrounded by millions of one-ton bags. And so the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, these are the lowest forms of life we've come across. You can call them forms of life. I don't know how that works, but I don't think they quantify, qualify. So the disposition to the left, to the towns, to your left, towns, the next row, where the second row is the population, the third row, which is highlighted at the top of the page, is the atomic Beckwell's physical decays per second atoms themselves. So Beckwell is a pulse of energy per square meter. So uh, Koryama City is 162,000 counts per minute per square meter in the city of 341,000 people. We're 90,000 homes, every one of them, the businesses included, schools, everything, playgrounds, is entitled decontamination, but they don't have the people. These are these meet all the attributes of a nuclear wasteland pre-Fukushima nuclear meltdown. So why, my goodness, why, oh, why, oh, why, would you keep children in that environment? And suggest that you're reducing the radiation inside school by one third by doing this is to pretend that you're that is not airborne. Because that's what you're doing in order to quantify those assertions, is you're suggesting that it's not airborne when it's impossible not to be airborne. You're in a nuclear wasteland surrounded by nuclear wastelands. There's the evidence. And the evidence comes from United Nations who are just Disgusting, despicable, degenerate subhumans. Back to Maximilia. The world's biggest sack of shit that works at. Currently at that place. International time again. Well, he's, he's got a lot of competition over there, right? He got, what's his face? Um. I've covered hundreds of times, can't remember his name for some reason. International Atomic Energy Agency team joined by China takes samples. They've only been there uh, five times in 12 years, all of them this year, twice for the soil to promote reusing grown food in the 30 million one-ton bags. I got no idea how the world, because like, you keep letting them get away with it. There's no incentive not to be evil, and now they're gone evil. They're, they're gone rogue on planet Earth. That's rogue what they're doing. It's 100% rogue what the nuclear industry is doing to you. They're completely rogue at this stage. They're, they're gone genocidal, omnicidal on us. Collected seawater samples near the crippled. Crippled. I find that so offensive to suggest that buildings that are completely gone, 
have lost their entire inventories for decades. And these are nuclear meltdowns. These dwarfs, Chernobyl, wind scale, <coughs> Three Mile Island, Santa Susana combined. They dwarf it, each of the buildings. The International Atomic Energy Agency experts from China, blah, 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 treat it, blah, 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 compare the levels of tritium, tritium, tritium. I can't comprehend how people can put their name and how they can look friends or families or loved ones or neighbors or anybody else in the eye or themselves in the mirror. I, I can't comprehend it. I can't rationalize doing that. I got no concept of how they can even tie their own shoes. Triple reactor fuel meltdown. I, I never heard it that way before. That's a new one. Thank you. Is that the new lingo now, like triple reactor fuel meltdown? Not even nuclear reactor, triple reactor fuel. What does that even mean? Why wouldn't you put the word nuclear there? Triple nuclear reactor uh, spent fuel meltdown. I got no idea what they're trying to say there. If they're trying, well, I know what they're trying not to say, except tritium. To dilute or reduce the tritium levels. So it's not like there's no abnormal levels of tritium in the fish or seawater. And they actually probably think they're human, right? They probably look in windows when they walk past them and say, well, I'm a pretty good human. Look at me. Ha. I'm wealthy. I got a nice car. I got a big home. All I got to do is just stab everybody in the back everywhere worldwide for the rest of my life. Nuclear fluencers, nuke fluencers, nuke tarts, are on a quest to push clean power from reactors. Nuke tarts. Bloomberg, of course. And human scumbag herself, Miss America, the current Miss Idiot Machine. Let's meet the newest generation of nuclear activists. That's outrageous. That is absolutely outrageous that they would call themselves activists. Right? And so there's only one person behind that narrative. That's Michael Schellenberg. Uh, I know Rod Adams, but Rod Adams is not in the game no more. In fact, Rod Adams has got the worst game. Rod Adams is is a um, is a venture capitalist. This is a guy who worked at a nuclear power plant. is now a venture capitalist, and has spent forty years promoting bananas and potato chips, on a level I've never seen compared before. Rod was the sickest bastard out there. There's a Brazilian model. There's Miss America. A nonprofit founder goes by Atomic Eric. What a little scumbag he turned out to be. And a PhD student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, who calls herself Miss Nuclear Energy and has more than 118,000 TikTok followers. Wow, wow, wow. And they're all on the same quest making fission more fun. Disgusting. Including one who receives funds for the U.S. Department of Energy, nuclear activist, who receives funds for the U.S. Department of Energy Lab, uh, a nuclear activist. Dan? <clears throat> Atomic evangelists are tapping into a generation that increasingly anxious about the warming planet by focusing on the fact that nuclear energy is carbon free. You take that back, you bastard. You can't say nuclear is carbon free, you scum. I'll fix you. They're going to be sorry you, you said that. Oh, man. Where do I even start with these people? Let's start right here. Every nuclear power plant needs at least two gas, oil, or coal plants dedicated to build it to run it in 100 years to decommission it. 
And gas, oil, and coal emissions don't cover the planet with radioactive plumes that pulses energy at the speed of light every second for millions of years, by the way. So calling nuclear clean energy is so sadistic Oh, let me show you another carbon-free nuclear site. <laughs> Hinkley Point. Look at the carbon-free site. They use more enough cement to build a sidewalk from Britain to Rome. They got enough steel there to build five or six container ships. It's the most expensive project ever done in human history. It's the most resource-intensive project ever taken out in human history. Carbon free, Dan. That's carbon free. And and to run that site needs two gas and oil bigger ones than normal that would run your city, your major cities. Just get rid of the gas get rid of the nuclear and just use the gas, oil and coal to pump water uphill and when it comes down, turn a turbine. Like it's hard to comprehend how out of touch with reality you got to be to suggest that nuclear is carbon free. The one thing, the only thing I can assure you about nuclear is their their evilness, their their incredible, brutal evil legacy is stunning. Oh, to be a carbon-free cowboy. Yeah, let me see. Oh, by the way, 15 container ships produce, produce more pollution than all the cars on the planet combined. Fifteen container ships produce more pollution than all all the cars on the planet. So there's currently ninety thousand of these ships on the planet at any given time. So there's currently ninety thousand of them ships is equal to uh, forty two trillion people when you scale it up. Back to the nuke influencers. Their short, snappy, and humorous videos and posts downplay the concerns of the opponents, including Greenpeace, who argue nuclear is neither clean nor safe. So Greenpeace is the first one to cut your throat if you're looking at nuclear for the first time. Greenpeace shouldn't exist. It, um, Greenpeace, all Greenpeace got to do to beat Finnish nuclear off is is tweet that picture. <laughs> and say, why are we talking about tritium? It's all gone, folks. And Greenpeace will raise billions by the next day. No, nope. too busy cutting your throat. Kaylee Cunningham, also known as Miss Bitch Energy, an MIT graduate student in nuclear energy, graduate student in nuclear engineering, drawed 2.4 million likes for her video on TikTok they made fun of nuclear scaremongering. So she's a mass murderer on a whole different scale, right? Think about how evil you got to be to do what she's just done. There are several about the controversial wastewater from Japan, actually something you don't need to worry about, she said. She said Japan is something you don't need to worry about. So you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about that. That's what she's saying. And got 2.4 million likes telling that lie. Claim that didn't happen. Cunningham said she received no funding from the nuclear group, was spurred to create her first TikTok video in 2021 after touring a geothermal plant in Iceland. And geothermal is everywhere. You don't need nuclear gas, oil, or coal. It's geothermal is like it's so stupidly simple. Connie said she was dismayed when energy experts 
conflated nuclear reactors with nuclear weapons. Well, there's no other way for them to get their plutonium. Right? The, the nuclear reactors are all about the fuel cycle because it needs to be in the reactor for 18 months or so to start to be a uh, breeder fuel, right, where it produces plutonium. It just keeps producing it. And the problem with the breeder is that whatever you started out with, that's what you got at the end of it. But you can produce... Like, the idea was to use these fuel combinations so that you can make isotopes for to make the fuel rods. So one breeder reactor can produce the isotopes to run hundreds of reactors, was the theory, which is the sodium reactors. They kept melting down. Like Santa Susana's released 460 times more than three mile island of radiation. It's equal to 460 three mile islands melting down in radioactive high level fallout. One of their favorites is why nuclear power is better than your X. Reason number one, it's clean. Yeah, well, dirty old skank like that. What do you expect, right? What a disgusting piece of shit she turned out to be, huh? Miss Nuclear. These nuclear influencers are helping drive a revival of the industry that's translated in the concrete steps around the world. There is no nuclear renaissance. What are you talking about, stupid? There's no nuclear renaissance whatsoever. You're down to 410 reactors now, for goodness sakes. It's a disgusting industry. And everybody seems to be involved in it. They reek. They reek like they just come out of a sewage. Since Fukushima, when a tsunami disabled a nuclear power plant, causing radiation to leak into the atmosphere. Causing ra and like when you hear leak, just you're talking about the lowest form of life. Why don't they show you a picture and then say that's leaking? Like, I don't understand these animals. These are animals. These are, and well, animals are actually good compared to these disgust. These are parasites, very dangerous parasites. 50%, 57 percent of Americans say they favor developing more nuclear plants. This is a ludicrous assertion, by the way. Miss America, Grace Stanky, is pushing the cars with a crown on her head. She only got there's many more talented and prettier women in Miss America. She got the job in order to promote the, the dying dinosaur nuclear industry. Skank, a University of Wisconsin-Madison nuclear engineering student. She's a first-year student. She's a nobody. Won the pageant and Zimmer chose to spend her year holding the title Promote Nuclear Disease Factories, appearing at conferences and encouraging students to pursue careers in a genocidal, omnicidal industry. Skank won $68,000 in scholarships through the contest and after graduating next year expects to work for Constellation Energy Corporation, the biggest U.S. nuclear disease factory in the United States. She's a parasite, like, let's face it, let's be honest for a change. Skank, who describes herself as a nuclear nerd, nuclear cunt, on her Instagram page, has 19,000 followers. Really, beautiful girl, promoted by all the media, but a despicable, disgusting, hideous nuclear industry. All she got is 19,000 followers. <laughs> That's hilarious. Then there's a scumbag Brazilian model, Mrs. Isodope herself. Isabel, we've covered her endless times. She was originally promoted by Michael Schellenberg, right? Uh, environmental Progress, which is a lobbying group disguised as environmental group. In one of her beauty regiment videos, she makes these alleged beauty regiment videos. They got nothing to do with beauty. They're more about nuclear energy than eyeshadow. We want our pores as clean as our electricity, the scumbag says self-described first nuclear energy influencer the first the self-described first nuclear energy influencer i think rod adams will kick the shit out of whoever hears that rod adams thinks of himself as the first nuclear energy influencer what what a dizzy sadistic twisted little fucking bitch to say something like that though really 
David Brown, Senior Vice President for Federal Government Affairs and Public Policy, Constellation Energy. It really has flipped the script, he said. You can't really be serious about environmentalists if you're not serious about nuclear disease factories. Yet the young nuke influencers continue to battle a lingering sense of anti-nuclear sediment. Like, in all honesty, I can't comprehend how they think they're human. I can't comprehend it. They know the difference. Kevin Camp, who claims that Fukushima fuel pool didn't melt down from beyond nuclear, They're very pro-nuclear lobbying group. High-level radioactive waste storage pools. And incredibly, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the nuclear industry, has given short shrift to the safety risks of pools. So these are catastrophes waiting to happen. There's the slower motion boil down scenario unfolds, but there's the fast motion drain down scenario. And one instance of that that we can point to in the United States several times now over the decades is the near drop of heavy loads. And one of my favorites, because I'm from there, Southwest Michigan, was Palisades Atomic Reactor, October 2005, nearly dropped a load weighing 107 tons. It dangled over the pool for two days they nearly overrode the emergency brake on the crane, which would have been catastrophic. You could drain these pools pretty much instantly. The waste would be on fire in a matter of hours. And the radioactivity releases would dwarf what we've seen at Fukushima Daiichi. There's no radiological containment around the pool. Let's play that again. It would dwarf Fukushima. Fire in a matter of hours. And the radioactivity releases would dwarf what we've seen at Fukushima Day. Like, really? You'd think that a Paladin fuel pool or, or uh, gas drops, it's going to dwarf what we've seen at Fukushima. Like, that, that should terrify you that something like that actually exists. That's beyond nuclear. And it's Helen Calicott's. A little idiot machine. They may be excited by the carbon-free energy that comes from reactors. Kevin Kemp. And Eric Meyer, who goes by Atomic Eric, is the executive director of nonprofit advocacy group Generation Atomic. 14,000 followers on Twitter, which is now X. His group gets about one-third of his funding from Idaho National Laboratory. How can you call him an a anti-nuclear activist, by the way? Which is which the, the U.S. Energy Department site, uh, Idaho National Laboratories, that's, that's a, multi, a military site. Several were impressed by how much uh, power can be provided by a pellet, especially when compared to a truckload of coal. Well, only, you only use 1%. It doesn't matter how much energy you got. You only use 1% of it. Right? And that's the game they play. They have to put this enormous amount of energy and compress it, but they can only get about 1% out of it. And then it's too volatile to keep inside the reactor anymore. And so once you take it out of the reactor, it goes into the fuel pool with no containment, it's splitting atoms into the environment. All fuel pools are doing that. And that's why the majority, if not all, the nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, as far as you can see. It's the only way they can poison you, and it's engineered into 
the infrastructure is to be surrounded by farms to mitigate the fallout and in the local area is to ship it to your supermarkets and poison you with it. In the best case scenario, people will do what I did and realize how important it is and then dedicate their lives to fighting for this, which is the pro-nuclear. In the best case scenario, people will do what he did and realize how important nuclear is and dedicate the rest of their lives to fighting for it. Like the contempt I got for these people is complete. They're actually moving people into the, so those little uh, white and yellow spots. White was last year where they moved people into the nuclear wastelands, surrounded by re nuclear wastelands. They call it difficult return zones. These are, no one should be in any of these spots. And the yellow is what they opened up for 2023. Now, you can, when you go there, you can't stop your car. You got to get out of your car and go in your house. In a nuclear wasteland. And so imagine that you got tricked and manipulated, your loved ones, your friends, your families, your uncles, your aunts, your parents, your cousins, your nephews and nieces, your, your friends, got manipulated into going into a nuclear wasteland in order to promote the nuclear industry, has some redeeming qualities. Well, no, you know, people move back in there. It's okay now, but it's not okay. And if you just because they opened it up and you went there, that doesn't make it okay. It makes you stupid. It makes you a moron. And it makes nuclear industry a scumbag of biblical proportions because they've done that. That's the scumbaggery of nuclear. That's the lowest form of life to move people back into a nuclear wasteland. Hong Kong, now we covered that. Cleanup costs for nuclear contamination sites have risen nearly 1 billion since 2016. So this is a bunch of sites, and of course, they're always surrounded by houses, right? These are nuclear wastelands, and they didn't tell the people when they were building the houses, building the little cold water creek flows. And all the children will go down to that creek during play as they're growing up over the last decades into the nuclear wasteland. See, a, a nuclear reactor... Uh, this is how we started off the last show. Uh, the ghostly glow of nuclear power stations detected in pure water 150 miles away. So they have water, and the water uh, flashes from the neutron, the anti-neutrinos. It's under kilometers of, of rock in Ontario. So kilometers of rock deep, 150 miles away, 240 kilometers away. The nuclear power plant registered in the pure water. So imagine living in a neighborhood. And then you might realize how really bad it actually is. And that if you've done studies on heart problems, liver problems, and lung and respiratory, and pituitary, and thyroid, and adrenaline, and Alzheimer's, dementia, and autism, diabetes, and Down syndrome, schizophrenia, then you would see that spike within 50 miles of these disease factories. Imagine you're 150 miles away, you're a mile deep in the granite in the rocks, and the nuclear power plant is lighting up your water. And you really think living in that neighborhood is safe. Oh my, I'm glad I got in show tonight. I'm going to pay for that for the rest of the night. The moral, I bet you. Brutally sick for almost three weeks. <coughs> so, look at this picture. That's four sides reactor four. <coughs> My apologies. That's four sides of reactor four. You'll never see that picture anyway. But ultimately it looks like this. In reactor three. 
So what they decided to do was put these contraptions. It's a reactor three to your left, reactor four to your right, reactor three to your left, reactor four to your right. So why didn't they clean up that debris? Why is there a big hole in the building down there? Well, these contraptions don't physically touch the stumps because they'll crumble, right? There's nothing there. The, the, the important part of the building is actually missing, right? Which is the top part of the building where the reactor cores and fuel pools were. But, you know, buildings blew up. Buildings are absolutely gone. That should have been razzed all the way to the ground. But they decided to leave them so they can build these contraptions and then pretend they're in buildings that don't even exist. That's why they done that. And, you know, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Uh, from a, there's 105,000 sites like that. They have no-go no zones everywhere. The whole freaking country is one great big no-go zone along with the Northern Hemisphere. After 20 days, they rolled out all the punnets. Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. So if he built the fuel racks for the assemblies, which is the fuel rods, each assembly has around 100 fuel rods, each fuel rod is 18 pounds, 12 feet long, well, he knows the top of the building doesn't exist. His job is to... Is to coerce you into complacency. And they're very good at it. There's nothing left of these buildings. And every academic on the planet who's seen that picture originally understood there's nothing left. And have, you know, originally there was reports coming out. And I've showed you some of that at night. Japan confirms full meltdown at all three reactors. Explosion may have occurred inside a vessel unit one can generate projectiles, missiles that endanger containment integrity. Not like when you look at the explosion to your right, and that's reactor one explosion over there by the way. So the ground is cracked. Now, what you see in the smoke there is, is uh, 40 times the normal speed, which was the, the steam, the steam coming out of the ground is at 10 sieverts per hour. These are lethal doses at 3 sieverts. So the steam coming out of the ground, they say, is 10 sieverts, but that's what the, the, the gamma uh, emitters or gamma detectors are re is maximum number is 10 sieverts. So these, you have to abandon, you, they did, and you have to abandon the site. And that everything that steam is touching is incredibly radioactive. And the site is incredibly radioactive. You, you know, you eject the reactor cores and fuel pools. We've never heard tell of nothing like that. It makes Chernobyl look insignificant. I guarantee you Chernobyl is not insignificant. The food was banned by 50, 55 countries for a decade, appropriately. And should be banned forever. Why would you take the ban off? It's nuclear wasteland. And they're so complacent, they're so out of touch with any type of reality. And this is sanctioned by the International Atomic Energy Agencies, UNSCLEAR and the rest of ERP and the, and the IPCR and the rest of them. They're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation in a nuclear wasteland. It's, it's the epitome of evil in overdrive. And claiming that if you divide this 1.3 grams of salt, the Malden salt flakes, and divide it 22 times, and one of those 22 is all that's going to come out of these buildings each year, and that's going to, they say 2.2 grams is in tanks. Like, it's so confusing because you picked up 30 million one-ton bags, you had 105,000 sites. How do you deny that? How do you deny that you abandoned all of these communities, but now you claim nothing got out? Do you got any idea, if they get away with it, how evil the next thing they're going to do to you is? And you, you have to fight with everything you got. You have, you have to rise up above anything you've ever done in your life, and, and you're against evil. Uh, you're against so much evil, it's overwhelming. Trust me, I know, it's overwhelming. It seems like an insurmountable task that you have set. 
And then what's the option? The option is if you got, if you sit silent, then these demons will take over on us. Oh, they'll tell you all the great little lies, make you feel all comfy, all warm inside. But I mean, some are there like uh, Al Jazeera saying 60 million one ton bags of radiation. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So, so they're like, you're pretending the building doesn't exist. That's pretty bad. You got professors of nuclear and quantum engineering saying that it's equal to three grams of sugar going into the ocean and that ultimately it's just 2.2 grams of tritium. Right, so you got all the major medias. These are CBS, AB, uh, BBC, Prince Rupert, and Phil Hayes. You got CNN, ABC. You got the head, you got a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering telling you it's like three grams of sugar f from a un the biggest university in South Korea. I'm providing you all the information, documentation to defeat their narrative. That's we've spent endless years getting the shit kicked out of myself doing research expeditions. I'm doing everything I can do. I, I don't know what else I can do. I wish I did. I, I can guarantee I'll do it. There's nothing I won't do for this planet and for you and for the 8 million species. There is nothing I won't do. You got a thoroughly degenerate, despicable, disgusting, revolting ideology known as the the International Atomic Energy Agency. My God, what they got done to us? It's frightening. Apologize, we never got no shows. We got one show in the week. This is the second show. And uh, I just never got nothing done in the week. Just hopefully now that I can get back to normal next week. If there is, there's no such thing as normal. I have to struggle. Uh, we got big waves down here, big ground swells currently. Anyway, I can't get on the ocean. People are going to have to realize they got to fund me. There's a lot of people out there that if everybody chipped in $10, um, you know, it's so difficult to do anything. Everything takes fuel, everything takes money, everything takes, everything breaks, everything's got to be repaired. We've been at this forever and ever and ever, and we can't fund the operation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything I can, and uh, th I'll do what I can. That's uh, all I can do, but there's so many things I could do if I had the opportunity, and the industry has every opportunity, and there's no... Right, I can challenge this industry, but I'll, you know, there's no foundations to support me, and so I'm pretty heartbroken by it, and it tortures me all day and all night, particularly at night. Uh, so I'm super happy we got a show in, regardless. We'll be back. We'll be back on Sunday, hopefully. I can't believe it's three weeks of being sick. It's definitely taking this toll on me. We'll see everybody on Sunday. Hopefully everything will last. And then hopefully nothing else happens between then. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Hope for everybody. Take care, folks.